Welcome back, everyone. Mm. This is David. Nina. And uh, we are in our third video, number three, um, talking about um, G Gundam, Mobile mm. Fighter G Gundam. Mm. And um, so we're going to actually start talking a little bit about the story. Yes. And um, such as it is. Such as it is. Mm. The story of Mobile Fighter G Gundam mm. um, basically mm. follows Domon Kashu. Which is the worst character in the series. Worst part of the show. Uh, and Rain Mikamura. Mm. Uh, best as part of the show. Probably the best. Mm. I like Alan. I know, know, but... Um, we have a differing of opinions on that. I, I also like the, the, the Russian team. Oh Yeah, lot. yeah. Um, There's a lot to like in the show. As yes. much as there is to hate. There is. There's a lot. It's just that Domon, Domon is um, just terrible. Um, Do you know what a Gary Stu is? I'll... I'll Tell the audience. Like, aside! Mm, an aside. So, in fan fiction writing and uh, elsewhere, now in legit fiction writing too, they, they started using this term, Gary Stew and Mary Sue. And a Gary Stew is basically a character who is unaffected by the troubles that he is experiencing. Yes. He is a one note character. Uh, and he is usually more powered or overpowered in comparison to other you know, characters within the story. Um, he is inexplicably perfect, uh, and nothing really ever changes. There's no arc. He is a straight trajectory from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And um, that is Domon to the 10th degree. Like, he must, I almost want him to be the original Gary Stu because he is just so dense and so boring. And I think there's a couple of ways that he could have been, you yeah, know, okay. Mm -hmm. But he is definitely, of all of the boy pilots that are the main character in a Gundam series, he is the rock bottom. He is the worst. I can, you know, even like Luffy is more interesting than he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, basically, uh, in, mm. in the world of G Gundam, mm. Um, most of the world is up on space stations right. uh, because earth has been polluted and whatever. And so every nation has a space station that mm. coincidentally looks like the nation on earth. Kind of. Um, or a stylized, uh, lazy, yeah, racist version. Of yeah. It. It's just like quickly thrown up there. <laughs> um, and mostly they look like just islands in the sky. And again, please go Google this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these um these space stations these colonies um build gundams mm. and then send them down to earth mm. which is a shithole yes which is a terrible place like um, every sci-fi series ever there's not much going on there and most of the people uh, apparently like poor and stuff like right. it, it it's a shithole there are people who terrible. are scrapping together a life but it's very full of struggle and yeah. they all want to get on the stations and everybody in the stations wants to get on the earth you know it's one of those grass is greener things i believe um and don't quote me but I think that uh, Neo Hong Kong mm. is the only, or Hong Kong, not yes. Neo Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the only place that doesn't have a relevant station uh, yes. that coordinates with it. I want to say yes. And the city is thriving and it's mm -hmm. like the only place on the planet that's really worth being. Mm -hmm. And that's why Hong Kong, Neo Hong Kong is like the, they've been the winner for the last, you know, four adventure things and, yeah. you know. <clears throat> Um, but Hong Kong looks lovely. Um, the, the art and architectural yeah. design yeah. is all really pretty. It looks yeah. really accurate. Mm. Mm. Um, I believe the creators actually went to Hong Kong uh, mm. as a part of the, the process here. Mm. Um, but anyway, so Gundam battle. Um, every, every country sends down a Gundam. The Gundams have every four years a Gundam battle, mm. which is a huge ass tournament. Right. Um, a million men enter, one man leaves and the, the winner their nation becomes um, in charge of the universe mm. uh, for four years. Because <laughs> that's totally would make sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always like sci-fi stories that explore a what if sports took over in place of war. And that's yeah. ultimately what this is. It is. Um, so you, you said a million men enter. And I think this is the point. Because I'm going to be kind of looking at this whole thing as a feminist the entire way through. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting. Of the pilots that we see... Piloting in the competition. In the competition. In the competition. There's only one female pilot. LMB. Right. Yeah. Um, but we do see female pilots outside of the competition. Correct. Spoilers for later. Um, they end up being the best pilots. 
Yeah, rain, rain, yeah. Which almost suggests, and this might be accidental, but, you know, it's kind of implied in there that, like, boys are playing games for boys. Yeah. But when it really comes down to solving problems, it comes down to two women characters. Correct. Who actually, ultimately, are the best of the best. Now, I don't think that Jigunum is, like, this feminist commentary or anything like that, but it's absolutely... A subtext that you could easily pick out of there. Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. The um, I would have liked to see more female pilots in the game. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, you go back twenty uh, years and fix things. It's weird. It's weird because G Gundam has um, a disproportionate amount for um, for standard television. Is mm. like you know there are two female protagonists, mm. um, and there are some other female characters that are really awesome. Does it pass back down? Yeah. I think you're right. I can't think of the conversation off the top of my head. But. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it. I, I think it does. Um, without looking at the specifics, I, the there's a scene where um, Rain has a discussion with um, the Russians, mm -hmm. um, of which the leader is a woman, mm -hmm. um, and they're talking about repairing the Shining Gundam. Um, before the competition, um, because she is the only one that can do the Shining Gundam. Uh, or oh, that's not even before the No, 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 no. I can do it. I can do it Oh, easily. sure, sure, sure. Uh, so the American Gundam, which we'll introduce in a minute, he's Should got, yeah, he's oh. got four lady friends. Yeah. And they are this team that back him up and they are from the hard streets of Neo New York. Yeah. And, uh, they had a rough life. Um, and there's a really cool episode where they and Rain have to kind of like come to tr like they, they, they're, they're in conflict yeah and at one point there is a conversation between rain and the women about where they came from who they are mm -hmm. and it's nothing to do with either of the male pilots involved it's yeah. just who they were why they are the way they are um and even and if you want to say that that's about chibity they also have a conversation where the one of them hurts their leg yeah um and rain has to fix it yeah, so no, that no, definitely true. passes yeah no it's not about chibity it's about who they are mm -hmm. um so Okay, yes, I would say it passes back down. Yeah, maybe it passes fewer times mm -hmm. than um, than some of the other Gundam shows. Sure. Um, but it certainly does pass. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not necessarily a metric to say that it is inherently feminist or whatever, because, you know... Um, These are just things to explore. All kinds of... Yeah, yeah. Um, Sex in the City passes. <laughs> um, so... Yeah. Um... The fight is to determine who gets to rule the universe for mm. four years. Mm. Um, and um, basically, the show goes into about four arcs. Mm. Um, Domon represents Japan. Mm. Um, Domon Neo Kashu. Neo Japan. Yeah, Neo Japan. He represents Neo Japan. <laughs> and is um, the least Japanese character I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, he is decidedly un Japanese in a lot of ways, um, at least culturally speaking. Like, uh, you know. Culturally speaking, mm -hmm. from our observations as gaijin outsiders who have yeah. been in Japan for a year. Yeah. Not experts, not. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's different than the cultural assumption of, um, Japanese, which is interesting because, um, all, a lot of the other characters use expectations of their cultures. That's true. Um, although I guess the big one, um, you know, slight spoiler, but Domon can't, um, express his emotions. No. Um, and that's, that is a common expectation for Japanese men. They, they're supposed to keep it bottled up. Yes. Um, they're supposed to be, you know, um, heartless. And ultimately whatever. that mm. is the thing that he's doing wrong. Yes. And it is. So it's, it's nice social commentary, but mm. that's how Domon is, um, you know, culturally mm. fitting, but he is different in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, which he's is boastful. He's, yeah. you know, very arrogant. He is not interested in, you know, working together. Yeah. Um, he's very much a lone wolf. He, yeah. He's a lone wolf, which is. Not popular. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, mm. first arc. Mm. Um, Domon finding the man in the photo. Yes. Base. <laughs> just him literally, like, running up to other Gundam pilots, being like, do, do you know who this guy is? Yes. And then fighting them. <laughs> yes. Um, because that's what you do, I guess. I mean, it kind of, like, kind of sounds cool, right? Or No, he, he fights them. And then when he's about to beat them, he says, before I beat you. I have to know, do you know the man in this photo? And it's, you know, it's beautiful and ridiculous. 
and and kind of fun. Like we have, I'm not sick of Domon at this point. So it's you know, it's kind of a fun, goofy thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's meant to be goofy, but it is, and it, if if so, it's effective. It's as goofy as the whole rest of the show is, whether it's meant to be or not. Although I think I think it is probably meant to be because. Um, the um the narrator mm. who is one of the coolest characters i love the narrator <laughs> um the the narrator of the show does mention mm. it um mm. in such a way that kind of makes it seem like it's a joke now again this is the voice actors of the american version yeah well so... i i definitely remember that mm. um that is definitely a thing okay. that carried over well. okay. Okay. um the narrator the, the narrator is important the narrator is um god yeah, he, he is inspired by the narration from Star Trek and The Twilight Zone. Star Trek. That's The director said so. Um, I guess maybe the um, the the intro um, theme, theme music thing. That's a captain song. <laughs> oh, sorry. Different nerding. I, I will I'll rein it in there. Uh, but definitely, or, I can definitely see The Twilight Zone thing because he is definitely introducing each episode and trying to like... Pose it as a question. He poses every episode as a challenge, an intellectually stimulating challenge for little kids. Yeah. I mean, it's important to recognize that this show was made for a younger audience. This it is. It's not made for adults. No. Adults can have fun with it, but, like, let's not... This is not meant to be high, intellectually stimulating... No. ...brain food for no, adults. No, no. And Although there are parts that are. Yeah, but you can't look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah, this is not this is not supposed to be Dostoevsky or whatever. <laughs> mm. Oh my god, if the Russians made <laughs> anime. Oh my uh, god. That would be sad. I guess it would be Grave of Fireflies pretty much. Oh yeah. My. Yeah. Um but the, the the these are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, that that sort of thing. Is that right, that's Captain's... the captain's log. That's I that's don't know. Kirk that's oh. Kirk recording at the beginning saying <laughs> I didn't grow up with Star Trek, I grew up with Gundam. Um, so. And yet somehow we still find a way to get along. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's because we can come together with um, Captain mm. Bright and Okay, Noah. so... Mm. Mm. So... Okay, so it's probably just a vibe. Just the... Yeah. In, in suggesting that this is somebody who's chronicling the event. Because that's ultimately what the narration is meaning. Yeah. Who cares? Let's talk about stupid robots. I mean... <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Um, Back but to the robots. He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, so, first arc, Domon mm. and Rain go around the world. Mm. They have this photo mm. um, of a dude. Mm. Um, and they are told that the, um, the pilots of a few different nations... Mm. Um, uh, German or not Germany, sorry, uh, Italy, mm. um, France, mm. um, Russia, mm. America, mm. Uh, a couple of others. They they would know. Uh, they might know who this guy is. And this is also all of your round one antagonists. Correct. Right. Um, every episode, Domon meets a new person, mm. beats them up, mm. and asks them who this guy is. And very quickly, we know that the reason he's looking for the guy in the picture is because. It's his brother. Correct. Yeah. And his brother is wanted for war crimes in Neo Japan because he stole a robot. And mm -hmm. that he and Do Domon's... I keep wanting to say Doremon. Domon. 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 I keep wanting to say Doremon. Doremon. No, it's not... Which would be a way funnier series. Yes, yeah, a cartoon cat going around. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, robot cats and back from the future. Never mind. Anyway. Uh, so, so the father made this terrible death Gundam, devil Gundam. Devil Gundam. Devil hey, Gundam. Dark Gundam. Dark Gundam. And the brother stole it, and the father is being held in cryogenic state. Correct. As his punishment for building this thing. But if Doman wins the competition... The Gundam fight, yeah. They will free his father. Yes. But in the process, he has to defeat his brother. Yes, he has and to defeat his brother, who's the Those are the stakes. Gundam. Those are the yes. starting stakes, and actually they don't change at all. And, <laughs> There's no change. Uh, no, no, no. And um, they also they uh, his mother died. Yes, his uh, mother is killed the in the process. Whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so he's looking for his brother, effectively. Right, right. Um, very classic story. Right. Um, very samurai story. Very. Yeah, like, yeah, if you yeah. You just yeah. took that part out and removed everything else. It would totally be a, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that dude's name is. Kurosawa. That's the one. Thank I... you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is this is this is her second, and she's had others. So. Oh, cool. um, all right, 
So, they meet a few of the main pilots, or <laughs> basically the whole main cast. Uh, the whole round one main cast. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there are others. But So first we meet um, Chippity Crockett, mm. um, the Neo-America pilot. Um, <laughs> possibly the most racist. Possibly the most racist. Or, or nationalist? Maybe that's the word we should be using here. Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. But this is, you know, tainted, complicated shit. Um... Yeah, yeah, we meet, um, we meet Sai Sai Shi. Sai Sai Shi. Um, Who from... is also weirdly racist. Yeah. Not, not weirdly, actually. Here's an understatement. Japan oh. and China have issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, understatement of the year. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, Sai Sai Shi. Then there's, um, George Desand from George France. Desand. Neo-France. Yes. Um, and then there's, um, Argo Golsky. Right. Argo from, um, Neo-Russia. Neo-Russia. So, um, Chibity. Chibity. Chibity pilots. <laughs> <laughs> the chest Gundam. Yeah, yes. He is, he is a Gundam with pecs. It really, like fleshy pecs. No kidding. Um, Nipple, nipples. There's nipples. Yes. It's awesome. He pilots Gundam Maxter. Maxter. Uh, Gundam Maxter. Not Master. No. Mm. Not Master Gundam. Mm. Um, Gundam Maxter mm. uh, is styled after a football player and a boxer. And a car. And a car, <laughs> and a um, and a cowboy. Yes, you're right, because he's got two two six shooters. Two six shooters that he blah, 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 blah. yes. <laughs> um, and so he has um, he his shoulder pieces, mm. his his huge shoulder pieces that are football armor. Mm. Um, they become boxing gloves. Yes. Um, and he he ejects off his football armor to expose his chest. His whenever... beautiful full. Muffiny chest. Uh, yeah. Mm. Um, the his... only thing that would have made him better is if he were also carrying a giant crucifix that he occasionally pulled off and hit people with. Yeah. <laughs> um, he has a football helmet. Fuck yeah, America! And um, mm. Chibity, mm. Um, Chibity is from Neo uh, Neo America. He's right. from New York. Right. Um, and he grew up with a hard life, and he's yes. trying to um, achieve the American dream. Yes. And he is, he is a rock star. He is treated as a rock star by his fan base. They, mm -hmm. they love him in the way that a football player is loved or a rock star is loved. Yeah. And he even has his team mm -hmm. that I was mentioning earlier. They, like, they look like groupies almost, but in actuality they are a highly skilled group of four women who follow him around and do all of his dirty work for him while mm -hmm. he's piloting. They're There's like, a lot of this in Gundam. Women outside doing all the dirty work while guys run around hitting each other. They're um, they're like they're halfway um, they're halfway pit crew, halfway Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. uh, which just, is kind of cool. I would watch the hell out of that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would watch their show on its own. So um, okay, Sai Sai Shi. Talk about Sai Sai Shi. Right. Oh, so so slightly. I mean, yeah. He's um, he's sneaky. He's a liar. Um, he is a thief. He is a child. I think that's important. Correct. He's the um, only child pilot. He's the only child pilot. <laughs> Later Gundam takes that off. Woo, everybody's a child pilot. But he is, in this series, the only child pilot. Correct. Uh, however, his motivations are noble. Uh, and he has, he has a great arc. Yeah, he does, through, actually. Through the series. All of the, the extra pilots, the enemy pilots who become the buddy pilots, they have the best arcs. They're the most interesting characters, other than the women. So uh, his motivation is that he was raised in this temple uh, because it is the last Shaolin temple. Yeah, it is the Shaolin temple, yeah. Right. And it's been pretty much left to die by Neo-China. Mm -hmm. Not New Hong Kong. No, Neo-China. Neo-China. This is, at this point, Hong Kong is still um, separate from China. That's true. That's true. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so he is in the Gundam flight to bequest of his emperor... That uh, the is bequest a word? I don't know. We'll find out. Somebody in the comments will tell me I'm wrong. Right. Um, uh, he wants the emperor to basically revive the temple, and he's doing it on behalf of these two monks who follow him around. They're his pit crew. Correct. Uh, and mostly, what they do is they stand around like this, right. and uh, yeah. and and worry about the temple and worry about him, uh, and that's. That's what they do mm -hmm. versus the Charlie's Angels who like steal shit and mm -hmm. fight and are awesome. Um, so yeah, he's he is unfortunately stereotypical, but he's got a beautiful arc. So he does. 
I can kind of, I can suck it up on that one. So here's an interesting thing. Um, and it just came to me. Mm. Um, Neo Hong Kong and Neo China are separate entities in this. Yes, they do um, seem to be, yes. At the point, um, well, they're they're not they're not actually covered by the same body. Like um, right. Neo Hong Kong is a separate Gundam. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. Chairman Wong um, runs Neo Hong Kong. That's true. Whereas Sai Sai Shi is still an China. emperor in China. Yeah. Um, so China and Hong Kong are separate entities. Um, and this show came out in 1994, right. 1993, 94. Okay. Um, and so at this point in actual real world history um that is true hong kong and it was hong kong was still a british protectorate right uh but 2010 um, is when it goes back um no 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 it's back uh in the real world it's Ah, it's back mm -hmm. it's a part of china Mm -hmm. um that's that's a huge social thing right now because um china is um fighting hong kong for the right to elect its own representatives right um it's a huge thing right um and so that's a minor bit of cultural ignorance because uh, it was well known in the late 90s when Hong Kong was going to shift hands. It was going to be an issue. It was going to be an issue. Mm. But the creators of the show didn't know that. Or they decided that that was not going to ever work out and inevitably mm. those two groups were Yeah. Split, which is far more nuance and attention paid than paid to the entire continent of Africa. For Cor- example. Yeah, yeah. Um... But there's, there's there was room for some commentary and mm. thought there, but it, it just looks like laziness. Mm, it does. Okay. Now, um, George Desand. <laughs> Desand. Um, George Desand mm. is um, the representative of Neo-France. And the voice actor does not try to say anything French, even remotely Frenchy. Yeah. It's, just, just putting it out there. There's like one... Doesn't he say like au revoir or something? But it's like... He does not say au revoir. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he says, but it's definitely not au revoir. Or rev roar. Rev um, I, 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 <sighs> it, um, it was not the shining moment. I'm not much of a Francophone, but man, I... No. Oh, in my ears. He was he was weird. Um, but I can't, I can't imagine it was much better at the Japanese version. No, I, I, I kind of um, want to go back and <laughs> listen just for mm-hmm. that. Um... But no, no, no. George Desand is um is Neo France. Um, One of my favorites. He's he's cool. I like him. He is. He doesn't um, have as much of an arc, but I like him. Yeah. Um, he's actually, an interesting I, kind, he's an interesting idea for a pilot. He is this knight, this romantic knight. Mm-hmm. He is there serving crown and country, above all, uh, above love. His duty comes. You know that kind of that kind of stuff. That would mm-hmm. be. Man, it would make its own. It would make a good Gundam series all on its own, which is true with all four of these guys, frankly. Yeah, they would all be better uh, protagonists. <laughs> the yeah. um, but I, I like that mm. um, his his arc is sort of reconciling uh, his duty and love. Du- well, duty and love, and also um, the the wording and the spirit of his duty. That's true. That's true. Because ultimately, he wants to do what's best for France, but yes. sometimes the leadership of France is stupid. Right. Um, and and of course, because he's the warrior, he mm-hmm. knows better. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's um, and you know, the 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 minor spoiler there is that France knows this. Mm. They're aware. That's true. Uh, and so they challenge him to make him make the choice for himself, which right. is cool. Right. Uh, which is cool. Um, but oh god, that's an anime thing, isn't it? Right. Yeah. The 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 mentor. Appears to turn on the character mm-hmm. and push them and push them in what appears to be an evil turn, and why are they suddenly so mm-hmm. irrational? But oh, lo and behold, it was a test the entire time to see if they would actually to do see if they would make light. the right choice, even when their mentor was yeah. challenging them. Um, which I think is subverted. That that story is subverted in the master um, domon. Correct. Yeah, story. it absolutely is. Um, but in, in the story of France, it's very straightforward, cut and yeah. dry. And his um, his support is his butler and Marie Louise, um, right. his love interest. Who is the French princess. And she actually saves the universe she twice. Does. She does. She is a darling character. She's a plucky space princess. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm you might not know, I am a big fan of plucky space princesses. The only thing that would be better is if she got in a gun. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, she saves the universe by... Um, guerrilla tactic crawling under a, a, a electric fence and like this is a real threat in the, it is in it is she could die she's, she's could die we see her her beautiful blonde hair is burnt yeah her gown is burnt and um, then she also um 
She also mans the artillery um, on the spaceship. Ah, she does in the Final Conflict. Correct. Full of women being badass on the outside while a man is having feelings on the inside. That is the climax of the story. Women out there fighting the good fight and a man crying. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's... Um, and, and the butler's kind of awesome. He is. He is. The butler's awesome. He's sort of... His, their focus episode on on George is really cool with the way the butler handles things. And he even has a um, a butler Gundam. <laughs> you know, a butler Gundam. <laughs> Which is badass. Like right? he apparently was also a pilot and mm. he he was really cool. Mm. Um so the butler's the butler's nice. Um he doesn't get to shine as much as Marie Louise Marie Louise. No. Um, but George is cool. George is cool. Um oh, about and, Argo. And, and and you know what? If it weren't for the Napoleon hat the Rose Gundam is beautiful. It is. Actually, the the Gundam Rose is probably my favorite mm. of them. Yeah. Um, I like I like the, the, the God Gundam a lot, mm. but um, the Gundam Rose is really pretty. So the Gundam Rose uses mm. funnels. Rose uh, funnels. Yeah. Rose funnels, right. And they're, they're literally rose blossoms that open and shoot and kill you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is... This is the cyber new type thing from UC. Yeah. Only cyber new types, only the best of the best, the the next generation of evolution can use the funnels. And hands down, every one of my Gundam, my favorite Gundam, with the exception of the Nobel, use funnels. The um the funnels that um that George uses, mm. the rose funnels, mm. are are very reminiscent mm. of the funnels from the Cubely. Mm. Uh, which is Heyman Carnes uh, in Z in Double Zeta. Right. Oh, and, and Zeta. He's and she's Zeta. at the end of Zeta. Yes. Um, also, I think Pi in Double Zeta has um, has a Kubli, the purple one or the red one. I can't remember. Briefly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Kubli are beautiful. Look them up. Yes, Kubli's are wonderful, and so it's. Um, but that's interesting because um, those are all women Gundams. They are. They are, and and that's the thing. There's kind of some differentiation between what women generally pilot and what men generally pilot. Yeah, um, and, and and George is definitely in what I would consider a feminine Gundam. Yeah, but they never like. They, he's never emasculated. No, like, they never. They never no. tease him about there's that or no, anything. There's no connotation that he's gay. No. There's no problem if he was. You know, he's, in fact, he's like a heartthrob. Marie, Marie Louise loves him, yeah. and um, even Rain kind of has a thing for him a little Briefly, bit. Briefly, yeah. Um, he's a gentleman. He's yeah. He's got some swagger. And then, of course, those um, those same funnels that ended up evolving into the um, the um, NZ six 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 Kshatriya. Yes. Uh, which is maybe my single favorite Gundam oh, yeah. um, mobile suit. One of the Gundams that makes you cry the most. Yes, mm. yes, that's the the the, the big one. Mm. Um, all right, so Mina, talk about Argo. Okay, talk about Argo. To Argo. To Argo. You've been drinking fast. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm repping for Neo Japan now. <laughs> sake. We're gonna fight. Um, so Argo is the Russian. This wasn't Sake Gundam. It's, oh my god! <laughs> I want to see Sake Gundam now. <laughs> Somewhere, some some sake company has paid. Someone to design a specific... Or a local town mascot gun. <laughs> Man, that would be so cute. Okay, uh, so, Neil Russia. Neil Russia's pilot is a criminal. Uh, he is in prison when we meet him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you meet him in prison, literally, because yeah. Domon gets thrown in prison. Yeah, Domon gets thrown <laughs> in prison because Neil Russia's scheme is to arrest pilots, throw them in the gulag, yeah. And uh, then deconstruct their robots and build technology based on that. Which is a good scheme. It works. Yeah, it does. Um, but, you know, our Gary Stu of a character, main character gets out anyway. But he doesn't. He gets out because of Argo. Correct. Argo yeah. helps him out. Argo helps him out. Although Even that's though... part of the plot or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah Argo so, helps him out. <clears throat> Argo has... Argo does not have much of a trajectory as a character himself. Correct. But the story around him has a trajectory. Yes, because of Neo Canada. Right. The people around him have this really interesting trajectory because it turns out he was a golden hearted space pirate from day one. But we don't really see that until all the way through. He was basically Captain Harlock as Gundam pilot. Yeah, yeah, in, in a lot of ways. Um <laughs> he's a he's a space pirate and he, you know, it looks like he murdered some guy's wife and he's a criminal and blah blah blah, but Ultimately, his motivation in the Gundam fight is the sweetest because he and his crew are in prison. He's got a bomb strapped to his chest that if he doesn't fight, somebody can hit a button and blow him up. Yeah. Um, which is always lovely. 
It's like the um, it's like a Keanu Reeves movie, like, <laughs> right? If you're flying under fifty miles an hour, your chest will explode. Yeah. Uh, and so his motivation for fighting is both his liberty and the liberty of his entire crew. Yeah. Um, and that's a thing that's kind of thrown in his face a couple of times. But the best thing, I would say, other than his relationship with Neo Canada, which is the weirdest sense I've ever it's seen. It's charming. It's it charming. is charming. It is charming. And sad. But my favorite my favorite part of, of, of him and his story is that he has got a Russian dom. <laughs> She's, she would be hot if she weren't a cartoon character. Let's put it that way. So he's got a prison warden who is, like, after they get out of prison, it's a long thing. But basically, she's making sure that he is representing Russia in the best way possible. And she's got the whip, you know, that she's flexing and smacking on her hand. And she's telling him what to do in this sexy, authoritative voice. And the fascist uniform. Fascist uniform yeah, and the red flutter. lips. She's, she would be banging as a chick. I gotta cosplay that. Someday. Anyway, she's dynamite, and um, their relationship is very sweet uh, because she knows that he's not a bad guy. She can tell. She's been following him for all of this time. She knows he's not actually a jackass. And in fact, when the conflict comes with with Neo Canada, Neo Canada thinks that he killed her wife. His Neo Canada <laughs> thinks that Argo <laughs> killed, killed Neo Canada's wife. Right. He did not. In fact, and he was trying to save her. He was trying to save her. And, and it is the the Russian Don, mm -hmm. uh, Donnie or whatever, uh, who sends Neo Canada the information that tells him, you're mistaken, that's not what happened here. Yeah. Um, so she actually reaches out to his mortal nemesis to appease him of the suffering, believing that wrongly that this man killed his wife. So she's got sympathy for Argo from the get-go. Yeah. And there's a scene near the end of things where he's kind of lost his fighting spirit and she revives his fighting spirit by showing up in a gorgeous, sexy red dress and inviting him to dinner where he has a big, voluptuous meal in front of him. And it's applied that it's kind of like a date. You know, yeah. obviously she's wearing a sexy red dress. Um, and I don't know what's suggested beyond that, but... The only thing that I think that relationship was missing was, like, at the end, they're showing celebrations, everybody's <clears throat> celebrating. I really wanted her to dip him yeah, and give him a big wet kiss, but, you know, that would have been, I guess, a little more than kids show should have. <laughs> I think, mm. I think that, um, um, the, in Pacific Rim, the mm. pilots, um, Sasha Kadnovsky and, uh, the Kadnovskys, yeah. um, the pilots of Cherno Alpha, mm. the Russian, uh, um, Jaeger. Yeah. Um, I think that they are inspired by Arno, or Argo and his, um, his dominatrix. Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no question in my mind that, um... Del Toro is a huge fan of G Gundam. Yeah. There's a lot of homage. There's a lot there of... There is. To all of the Gundam, but specifically there are some things that G Gundam and, you know... Mm. Yeah. Well, and um, Cherno Alpha specifically is modeled after a Zaku. Yes, it is. So it is. it's... Uh... Now, the Bolt Gundam, which is the Russian, Neo-Russia's Gundam, does not look like a Zaku. It does not. No, <laughs> it's it's no, got no. a winter hat. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, it looks like a... Like a um, a Miyachek soldier or something. Mm, mm. Um, and he has he has this shoulder piece that turns into a uh, a ball and chain with a like sort of yeah. psychic chain. But it's just like sort of energy morning star. Thing. Yeah, and he turns into a big flail and that's yeah. his major attack. Um <laughs> and so yeah. First arc we basically find out Domon is looking for his brother Kyoji. Mm. Um did we for him? Yeah we did. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, we also, we meet, um, we meet uh, those four characters mm. and we also get um, a taste of some of the others. We get an episode with uh, Mexico, Tequila Gundam, right. um, which is a, a charming story mm. uh, we addressed a little bit ago. Uh, Canada's got Lumber Gundam. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a Lumberjack. Straight up. Uh, it's a Lumberjack. I think it's, um, I think it's Grizzly Gundam in the English version. I don't remember. I, you know, you might be right. It, it's briefly touched on and then they go back onto the story, which is cool Yeah. Although, um... Because the story is sweet. It's yeah. a good story. Uh, yeah, Neo Canada gets featured in another episode later, um, yes. which sort of wraps up that story, and it's yes. really good. Mm. Um, we meet... In the first episode, we meet Neo Italy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what it's going to be called, but it's stupid, <laughs> and the guy... He, he returns to As an to Italian, me. I am deeply offended. Yeah. Um, it's not even, like, Pizza Gundam or anything fun like that. It's no, just, it's just... 
Some ugly fucking shit boring ass on. Gundam. Yeah. Um, and the pilot's a douche that has like there, there's not even Italian stereotypes. He's just a douche. Yeah, he comes back to be a raging douche later. Right. He's just kind of vaguely Euro trash, which is not necessarily <laughs> Italian. We meet um, Neo Egypt's um, Pharaoh Gundam, which we talked which about. Which yeah, Mummy Gundam. Um, uh, he, yes, he's he is ripe for terrorizing Thundercats. Mm. <laughs> um, we go to Neo Turkey where we meet Minaret Gundam, mm. which is um, actually kind of beautiful. It is. Yeah, I, he's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I think he's, um, I want to say Scythe Gundam. Mm. Um, Scythe Gundam in America. Which is Wing, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, Death Scythe. Like, oh, weird one. Weird one. So, in the episode where you meet Arno, mm. uh, Argo, the Russian, um, the Russian, Russian pilot, mm. um, in the prison, we were saying that um, the whole plot is that they get people to come in, Gundam pilots to come in to fight, yeah. but then they abduct them and mm. they take their Gundams mm. and whatever. Um, in the hangar where you see the derelict Gundams that they've stolen mm. and are taking apart or whatever, um, you see a proto death scythe yes. in there. Um, at this point, Gundam Wing had not aired. Yeah. Um, so it's a proto um, death scythe and it's... Now, so was it in production or do you yeah, think the production it was saw? Uh-huh. It was in production So it was point. a spoiler for a later series. <sighs> Probably. Uh, cool. a, spo- a spoiler or something. Yeah. Like, it could just be that they just recycled the design, but who knows. Um, but you do see a proto-death scythe in there. It looks, <laughs> it looks closer to the Endless Waltz Death Scythe Hell Custom um, than it does to the classic Death Scythe. But, um, you'll, you'll take his word for it. Yes. Or you'll Google it and tell yeah. us that you disagree. You know, whatever. Um, but it's, it's only a brief shot. <laughs> um, and then we also see England, um, who has Gentle Chapman. Um, That's a funny translation. It is. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, that's another translation issue. Uh, in in Japan, we have England who has John Bull Gundam. Right. Um, John Bull is, of course, the um, the Uncle Sam of um, England. Right. Um, everyone in England knows John Bull. Um, but the translators didn't think that American children would know John Bull. And you didn't, did you? <laughs> Most of them didn't. I, I like. I, I guess I probably wouldn't have if I were a kid in America. Um, so, yeah. yeah, they changed it to Royal Gundam. Royal Gundam. Um, which you know it Makes works. Sense. Yeah. But then you're like, why is there Noble Gundam and Royal Gundam and Rose Gundam isn't called anything? Like you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's not dig deep. <laughs> So Turkey has Minaret Gundam or Scythe Gundam. Um, the Turkish pilot is a friend of Rain's from college. Yes, that's a really sad story. It is. It's a really sad story. But it's the first time that we really see Rain out on her own doing her own thing. And it's straight. I mean, like, we're three episodes in, maybe? Uh, seven. Seven. seven? Okay, well, we're not far into the series because it's 50 episodes long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we really very quickly, therefore, see that Rain is... An intelligent, independent person. She's a doctor. That's what she went to school for. So she's a doctor and a Gundam engineer. And um, she's got her own thing. Like, she had her own life. Yeah. And, you know, um, so basically the guy she went to school with, that's the guy that she left behind. Mm -hmm. Um, She left behind because she was answering her father's call to help with the Gundam fight. Um, so being on the Gundam fight is what pulled her away from this guy. Yeah. And it's like, it's the most, one of the most serious episodes, I think. It is. Because he's sick and nobody knows why he's sick. And this is, um, this is an important cue too, Mm. because, um, Domon and Rain knew each other as children. You're right. They were friends as children. But... They did not grow up all the way together. Like right. they did have their own lives, and this Joe this Hong expresses goes off that. To learn to become a martial artist, yeah. not a Gundam pilot, but a martial, but a martial artist. artist. And she goes off to medical school and be you know useful to society. Yeah, and that, that's not just my opinion. That's also implicit that yeah, what no, she did was there. useful. What he did was frivolous. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that's I think that's a really important thing to mm-hmm. notice. And it's with that story, with this side story about Rain and her background, that we are first introduced to the Dark Gundam cells. Yeah, the DG cells right. that that um, infect people and make them do evil things. And this will become a major plot point down the, the line. But this doesn't happen with Domon's story. This happens with Rain. It's Rain's story, story because mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's it's a medical issue. Yeah, which yeah. is interesting. So there's um. Arc 1, we'll be back with Arc 2.